as we're finishing the sides, now's a good time to add some holes. I almost forgot to add the holes for the side mirror, and uh, now's the time to do it. So uh, apparently Junior Models didn't have any side mirrors, and this particular car had them on the front fenders, uh, which were at original, so we just closed those holes off. What we did is a quick search on Alpha BB resulted these dimensions. So it's 155 millimeters from this straight line here, and 92.5, that's the distance of the mirror. It's also 50 millimeters from this wage line here. So now we're just gonna go ahead and drill the holes and put the mirror in place. important part of the bodywork process is to try all the parts that go in place. Uh, here we tried the taillights. We, nev we never cut the metal around them so they should fit uh, well, however we tried them just in case. So one common problem with these uh, production door skins is that the handle is not punched um, always 100% straight. Um, so to check this, we put the handle in place, the one that we're going to use, and then trace the outline with a pencil. This will help us align it with the swage line to make sure that they're both uh, straight. It's quite easy to correct uh, the alignment. All we need to do is just bend the lip on the top of the door uh, a bit further down. So like that we remove any free play up and down on the handle. preparing the size for gray filler. Uh, however, we had to go over it with filler one other time. Uh, basically, the first time we did the, the door and the quarter panel separately, so now we're blending the two together. So we're going over these areas here to make sure that the sides are flush. So here, not to worry, we're going to open this gap later with a saw. So to establish a datum for the sewage line, uh, we're using a piece of flexible conduit. Um, the, when we bend it, it takes the curvature of the swage, which is not straight, it bends ever so slightly at the front and back, and curves outwards too. So after that we're going to trace the, the line with a pen, and then establish a datum where to sand. So we're going to sand up to the line. After lots of filling and sanding, we're just going to take uh, some primer and go over the swage line so we can see clearly if it's good or not. Um, all the different patches of color and metal make it very difficult to see. After what feels like a really long time, we're ready to apply the primer on the sides. 
Uh, it took us about three days of just filling and sanding continuously, but I think now we're happy with where we are. There's still the gray filler to go after the red, uh, but the better the base, the easier it will be to get a really good result. After applying the gray filler, I made sure it's dried well, uh, so I leave it for at least a day, and now we can apply the guide coat. So the guide coat will show us the high spots and low spots, and we will sand it uh, to remove the texture from the gray filler. Eventually we will go all over the car with the guide coat. Uh, however, I'm just doing doing it in stages, so like this we can see the swage line um, after we cover all the roof and all the sides and so on. So looking closely at the area we just sanded, we can see that this area is flat, so all the little spots have gone. And uh, here we have still humps some texture, which means we need to rub down. Uh, the guide coat will also show us any low spots. So if one area is still um, shaded in black, we don't want to like push it and keep on sanding till it's gone. We just want to lightly sand all over uh, till the whole area is flat. So as we sanded all the guide coat, now it's time to focus on the swage lines and we're going to get the profile right. So here it's a little bit more rounded and here it's a little bit more sharp with the filler. So we're just going to go over it and uh, get it even all over the panel. we found works best after trying many different blocks is this ruler. So it has the right thickness to be able to bend to the curves of the body as uh, no area is flat so everything everywhere has a slight curve um, and that will show us the imperfections. This took us a long time and we had to go over it twice or three times but the results seem to be really good. We also finished the filler in 180 grit as it's uh, enough to shape yet soft enough not to leave very deep scores. another coat of grey filler. It doesn't look like we have done much, however this took really long and we had to go over it twice or three times, so uh, I hope this will be the last coat and I will be able to finish the last sanding before the final paint.
far one of the most problematic areas fin in finishing the outside of the body was this wage line over here. So finally, I think we found the right way to do it, and that is to use tape as a guide and uh, swap sides as we're going. So first we did the top part in black guide coat with the tape at the bottom, and now we switched it. So after that area was sanded, we just taped the top and put the guide coat to show us the line. So next with the ruler, we're just going to sand over the bottom part. A question that comes up often whenever I post um, pictures of block sanding the sides is if whether I use the rubber seals in place or not. So the answer is definitely yes. Uh, you don't need the rubber seal in place. Right now I just assemble the channels and then we'll put the door. By having the seal in place, we'll have a good reference and won't have any surprises later. It will also help the door from moving inside and out uh, while sanding. Uh, to assemble the rubber, there's this little groove in here. And what I'm using is, um, with the help of the silent key, I'm just pushing the rubber seal into the slot, like so. After endless hours of sanding, we're almost there. So the next stage will be quite interesting. Um, after five years, we're going to take the body of the rotis here and put it onto a smaller frame to be able to take it to the paint shop. So earlier on, I prepared the materials for the second frame. Uh, basically, we just uh, cut the sections and we also made some brackets to fit into the jacking points. And this frame will be used to take the card to the paint shop. So now I'm joining it together, and the trick is to just uh, put tack welds in the corner and then weld them for later. So as we're tacking, we're just checking that all the sides are square, and uh, this way the frame will fit nicely. So to lower the body safely, uh, we're going to use the chain block at the front. And we'll use this trolley used to lift heavy machinery at the back. strips from an old wetsuit uh, to protect the jacking points from getting scratched. So with the body on the new frame, it looks like we're almost there, uh, that is ready to send the car for a paint job. However, as we're going over the details, I notice something that I'll have to fix. So this door gap over here looks quite good and straight, however when compared to the other side it's just a little bit too wide, so I think I'll have to fire up the welder for this. So we can see that this gap is much narrower and more neat than the one on the left side. So here we started building the edge with welding. Uh, it still needs a little bit of filling over here and then we'll smooth it out with the belt sander. So once the car was off the road this year, uh, we were doing some checks and we noticed something that wasn't quite right at the front and we couldn't see it with the car on the road this year. Um, I'll let you figure out what that is. Here's a hint if you haven't guessed what's different. So it's very difficult to tell on camera, however this curvature isn't, isn't equal. On the other side it's a little more straight and on this corner it's a little bit more round. Um, so how are we going to check this? So it was quite tricky to find a way to transfer um, the curvature onto a template, so we came up with this little gadget. Basically the pointer is connected to a pencil, and the level just makes sure that we're keeping the line straight. So as we go up, we're tracing the curve uh, to cut onto the template.
So after looking at pictures closely, it seems that the left side is the correct one. So to copy um, the curvature on the right side, we just made these templates. So we made one um, for the front of the curve, and we used the pencil line uh, to find the reference on the left side too. So here we can see how closely the template is to the curvature. So compared to the right side, the side is way more round. As we can see from the gap going all the way up. Same goes for the template that goes onto the front. Here we can see a really big gap. So it will be a bit drastic to fix this after we have this uh, area on paint. However, to fix this problem, we're going to cut the seam over here where the front mudguard meets the front veil is, and then we're going to reshape it according to the new templates. So as we're trying the template in place, um, after the cut, we can see that the extra material was in between the two panels. So what I think happened was um, the new front mudguard and the valence were a little bit longer and we didn't trim enough, but we joined them together. So at least now uh, we can compare to the left side. So to correct this curve, we just cut all the old weld, um, added some extra clearance within the gap, and then with some ratchet straps, we stretched uh, the shape to be corrected again. So now we're gonna check it with the templates and they look pretty close. After a really long time, we're just waiting for the tow truck and to take the car to the body shop. I mean, after all the sanding, it looks okay, but there's still some areas that the painter said uh, need some improving, uh, mainly some areas over here and a bit on the sides. So we'll he, he will be over going over those um, and then applying the final coat.